Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Lauren, and I will be talking to you about the difference between instant gratification versus delayed gratification. Instant gratification is something that is easily obtained. It comes naturally. There is essentially no work that goes into it. Like, you could go to the store tomorrow and buy yourself a shirt, and it'll make you feel really good about yourself. You think you look good maybe the first two times you wear it. Then the third time, the feeling is neutralized. It's gone. You don't really feel it anymore. Whereas delayed gratification, there is so much work and so much time that goes into your journey in obtaining the goal that you are searching for. In sixth grade, I moved to Birmingham and I didn't know anyone. I was attending a new school and I really wanted to make friends. And they were talking about student elections. And I decided that I was gonna run for class president. So I came home and I told my mom, like, mom, I'm gonna run for class president. And she was like, um, are, you, are you sure? Uh, maybe secretary? treasurer, anything else? And I was like, no, I'm gonna run for president. And so, you know, I made my speech, I worked really hard on it, and I ran. I didn't win, but they gave me a pity position. I was a representative of something. Um, and when I got the idea to run a marathon, the reaction I received was basically the same thing. I came home, I'm like, Dad, I'm gonna run a marathon. Are you sure? Half marathon? 10K? Anything else? Um, and talking to people about it, they were like, you're too young. You know, you might injure yourself. You can't do it. But I just kept telling myself, I can do it. And that was kind of my motivation to prove to all these people wrong. And when you're looking to complete something that's going to take you a long time, you need a really strong motivation. So, and then along with that motivation, you need a plan of execution. I was running four days a week, and as I was running more, I found myself getting so hungry, like, all the time. So I was eating a lot, and then um, it was really cold this winter, so I had to run on treadmills for two hours at a time, sometimes running like 10 miles. And if you want something you have never had, you have to do something you have never done. This was said to me by my mentor, and it really means a lot, because when you're embarking on a long journey, you have to expect that you're gonna be doing things you've never done. Um, I ran 475 miles over the course of nine months to train for the 26.2 mile marathon. And it was really cold sometimes. <laughs> this is me um, getting ready for an early morning run around 5 a.m. I was running 10 miles before school. And with running a marathon, um, there wasn't really room for excuses. I couldn't say, oh, I don't have time for this. I realized you, have, you, you do have time for these things, you're just not making time for these things. And I found myself making quite a bit of time. And along the journey, I had an amazing support system. On the left, your left, um, is Miss Rabideau. She was my freshman year honors world history teacher. Um, she was incredible. She believed in me from the beginning and she was very important in the marathon. And on the right is my other mentor, Jeannie Wilcox. She has run 11 marathons and completed one Ironman. She came down from Grand Rapids to run the 13 and 18 milers with me. And these are the Incredibles that were my relay team in the marathon, and they were very important. And Mr. Provenzano came out for the day. And along your journey, you have to expect that there will be struggles. And I had quite a few of them. Um, sometimes with my training schedule, I would have to run three times during the school week and then once on the weekend. And 
I would get lazy because I had so much homework or I didn't get that much sleep and I would miss a training run and that would really mess me up for the weekend run, which is really long most of the time. And as I said earlier, I was very hungry, so I wasn't usually in the mood for fruit, so. I, uh, <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> and also, there were times where I would have to wake up super early on a Saturday morning and run 18 miles, and so I wasn't able to go to a party or go out to dinner with my friends or anything like that. And that kind of brings us full circle to the instant gratification versus delayed gratification. And I learned that delayed gratification is so important because I still feel amazing even though the marathon was, you know, a month ago. And all the work that I put into it kind of makes me feel that accomplishment, that achievement fulfilled, that deeper feeling inside. And, and that's really important because with instant gratification, as humans, we're so caught up in wanting something now that we're so overwhelmed with something that's going to take nine months that we just don't do it. And I think what you should take away from this is that you, to be a happier person, need to look at that challenge and not get overwhelmed by it and not say, oh, it's gonna take nine months, I'm not gonna do it, because the feeling is so much, it's so worth it, and you will just be a happier person. And that is the importance of instant gratification and delayed gratification. Thank you.